All right, sorry about that, with a glitch in the camera. We uh, Usually the day before, we ask volunteers to show up uh, who are available to take that Friday off to help us remove these barriers and blockades and make it a little bit more safe for some of our other volunteers by helping us to remove uh, briars and other tripping hazards as much as possible in the stream. Uh, we recycle as much as we can that we pull out from Bread and Cheese Creek and the metal we find in the stream is another one of our uh, things that we use, the recycling amount we sell it in order to help pay for our fruit cure cleanups as well. Uh, so we are also always accepting donations of metal and aluminum cans if you want to get rid of them and we'll scrap them for you to once again help pay for our stream cleanups. Once again, the amount of ice makes some of the trash on the bottom pretty difficult to see. But this section is not horrible because we've cleaned it previously, which is why one of the reasons why I think we are, we're going to try for a larger section of stream. Plus, any time it rains, and we have not had a lot of snow or rain this winter, is when the stream also gets more choked with trash as well. And a lot of people say, well, why do people throw stuff in the stream? Well, you know, we've come to learn it, it tends to be a minority of people that actually throw stuff in the stream. Most of the time, it washes in. Like we were saying before about the antiquated, outdated stormwater management employees. It's, you know, people put their trash in the trash cans as they're supposed to. But... The trash cans in many of the shopping centers, and if you drive behind the shopping centers area, you'll exactly know what I'm talking about, are overflowing because the landlords or the retail establishments don't want to pay to have them emptied as often as they should. And because of that, there's another shopping cart, that's number three. And because of that, the trash cans overflow, and when the wind blows things out of them, they wind up in the parking lot. And because of the antiquated stormwater management, as we said before, it goes in to the creeks. There's number four shopping cart and number five shopping cart. And there's a tire below the surface. I've seen several rims and a couple tires on the way. This right here, up on the hill, is a Tom Coffin's house who owns G&H Auto Parts, who has been one of our longtime supporters, and he always allows us to use his yard as an extraction area for our cleanups, which we're eternally grateful for. And he's given us donations too to help with our cleanup efforts on several times, which we're also eternally grateful for. We are now coming around the corner, and uh, this part of a motorcycle, which I'll get pictures of close up when we come back the other way and I take still photos. Like I said, I apologize if some of these images are turning out the best in the, this particular stream walkthrough, but a lot of it is definitely due to the ice, which is causing a lot of reflection. The stream is absolutely beautiful, and I'm sure that you've by now looked at pictures on our Flickr account and our website and seen what it looks like when we leave, and it's, it's a treasure, it really is. And I know that the people appreciate what we do and the incredible efforts of our volunteers because they hear it over and over again. And I know they are not the ones throwing this trash in. 
And if we could just get our stormwater management updated in this area, it would not only save the Chesapeake Bay, it would not only save Bread and Cheese Creek, but it would allow us to move our cleanup efforts even further beyond Bread and Cheese Creek. This year we're, we always do Stansbury Park. We've done Lynch Cove run in the past and we'll be doing it again. Uh, we always assist with the Peninsula Expressway cleanup. So if we only had to do one cleanup a year on Bread and Cheese Creek to keep it in decent shape, then we could expand even further. Uh, shopping cart number five. Uh, and clean up other areas of Dundalk, which is what we've been trying to do. I mean, our name may be Bread and Cheese Creek because that's our home, Clean Bread and Cheese Creek, but it's really sh more likely to be Clean Dundalk. Uh, there's number six on the bottom. You can barely see the wheel of the shopping cart. And there's number seven. Because Dundalk is our home. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful town. I grew up here, and it was incredible to grow up in. It, it has seen better days, but it can be the beautiful little town that many of us remember again. It's like this stream. The stream was once spotless when I was a child, and it can be again. I know as you listen to this video, y you think that I'm, you know, sometimes might say crazy or you might think that our efforts don't matter, but it does. Every piece of trash that we pick up, every single piece counts. That's one less piece of trash that's going to flow into the bay. That's one last piece of trash that a child or an animal is going to get injured on. That's one more piece of trash that's going where it should go, into recycling our landfill, as opposed to clogging up our streams and waterways. And we run our cleanups like a family cleanup. Everybody's welcome. The youngest we've had so far was four as a volunteer, and the oldest we had was 92. There are plenty of things for everyone to do. If you want to be the people to help dig us out shopping carts, if you're strong, that's wonderful. If you want to be one of the people to help carry the trash bags from the bank to the pickup trucks, that's great. If you want to be the people, one of the persons who drives the pickup truck from dumpster to pickup point, that's wonderful. If you want to be somebody that helps in registration, that helps sign people in, that's great too. Anything and everything, there's something that all people can contribute. And we're grateful for every volunteer we get. We've had people stop by and say, look, you got me for an hour before I have an appointment. Is there anything I can do? An hour's great. You know, three hours great. Four, anything is great. Because that's more time to clean up our creek and our community. And this is a beautiful stream. It really is. Our descendants, most of us who've been in Dundalk forever, died in this creek, defending our nation from what is called the Second War of Independence during the War of 1812. And they gave their all. An 18-year-old and a 19-year-old boy, Wells and McComas, saw General Ross and thought to themselves, we could take a shot and we'll die, or we can run away. They took the shot, and they shot and mortally wounded General Wells. And because of that, the War of 1812 in the Maryland area, I should say in the Dundalk area, pretty much ended. And that was all because of two volunteers who did something they believed in. We thank you very much for watching our video. This is John Long of Clean Bread and Cheese Creek. 
We hope to see you at our next cleanup on April 6th. To find out more information, you can certainly visit our website, www.breadandcheesecreek.org. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.